Hello, and thank you for joining us for worship from St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Claremont, North Carolina. We are so glad to have you with us for this third Sunday after Epiphany. As we continue through the time after Epiphany, stories of the call to discipleship show us the implications of our baptismal calling to show Christ to the world. Jesus begins proclaiming the good news and calling people to repent right after John the Baptist is arrested for preaching in a similar way. Knowing that John was later executed, we see at the very outset the cost of discipleship. Still, the two sets of brothers leave everything they have known and worked for all their lives to follow Jesus and fish for people. Now let us begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading for this day comes from the prophet Jonah, the third chapter. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up and go to Nineveh that great city, 
and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, 40 days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw they did, and how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this day is Psalm 62. For God alone I wait in silence. Truly my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold so that I, I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Placed on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put no trust in exhortation. In robbery, take no empty pride. Through e though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. And our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called to them, and they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from him who was, who is, and who is yet to come, Jesus the living Christ. Amen. In addressing this text and proclaiming God's word to you today, I want to begin by drawing an analogy with what we might learn from this text and use this as an interpretive key for us, and that is the little game of show and tell. <laughs> Do you remember the game of show and tell? Certainly, I did that with all my children. It goes something like this. For example, I've got this mask here. This is a drama mask, so I'm showing you this drama mask. It's, it's a mask that I've had since uh, eight, 1989. Now, this mask reminds me of a time when I lived in Wilmington, North Carolina, and when I worked with a drama company called Celebration Theater. And I directed a show there in Thalian Hall, uh, entitled Birth of the Little Typewriter Girl, <laughs> and also uh, was in the production of The Trial of Pontius Pilate. And I was pilot, no less, <laughs> in that production. And so this reminds me, show and tell, reminds me indeed of a time in my life, a time that I enjoyed very much in being in drama and in production and, and doing all that. Yeah, a very meaningful time. Uh, for me. Well, certainly, that's not too hard to do. It, it's usually not hard for children to do that. You know, they'll take some object, a toy or a, a stuffed animal or something that, you know, they have some familiarity with, something that's very meaningful to them, and then they'll, they would stand up in front of class and then show and then tell. Now, I want to take show and tell and use that as an analogy <clears throat> to look at this text. It will help us to understand how and in what way Jesus fulfilled his mission as a bearer of the kingdom of God. <clears throat> it will also help us to understand our call and task to also be bearers of the kingdom of God in the world. In this gospel lesson, Jesus appears along the seashore. We hear of the call of Simon and Andrew, the sons of Zebedee, James, and John. This follows on the story we heard last week of the call of Philip and Nathaniel. Jesus walks along the seashore and encounters first Simon and Andrew and then James and John. There must have been something about Jesus. 
And indeed, there was. We have been celebrating that something, certainly since Christmas, with the birth of the Son of God in the flesh. And we have been celebrating that something of who our Lord is and who he was in this season of Epiphany. There is something about him here. His presence and his words drew them to him, invited and encouraged them to follow him. And I want to take some time to talk with you about that something that drew them to him. Now, to answer that question, it is, in, it is important to note the context of Jesus' call to the disciples. Jesus sojourned along the seashore and called his disciples after his baptism. Jesus' baptism formally began his public ministry with the dispensation and the presence of the Spirit poured out on him for his mission in the world as the Son of God. Other Gospels add and tell us that after his baptism, Jesus spent 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. In that time of great testing, as other Gospels depict for us, he gained clarity about who he was as one of us in the flesh. He also squarely faced the temptations he would encounter as one of us in the flesh. This time in the desert was for him a core spiritual formation event, whereby he came to know that he needed to remain close to the Father and to rely on the Word of God. That experience would undergird his ministry and his mission. And we see in the narratives of the Gospels that he would often go to a place apart to be with the Father, to meditate on the Word of God, and to pray. And then we hear, as he passed along the Sea of Galilee, he called Simon and Andrew, follow me and I will make you fish for people. We are in the season of Epiphany, a season of revealing, of making manifest, of showing who Jesus is and what his coming into the world means. Jesus and the power of the Spirit, anchored in his relationship with the Father and the Word of God, bore within his personal countenance and presence and in his public words and actions a unique something. <laughs> Show. It showed. Jesus showed that he was worthy of trust, that he was one to whom one could listen and to learn, that he is one worthy of following. He also modeled for them the necessity of telling. He modeled for them the primary task of proclaiming the kingdom of God, as he did in proclaiming the good news. It is noteworthy that Jesus in his call to his disciples did more than call them into relationship with him. He spoke of the primary task of those who would be his disciples, namely to be fishers for men and women, girls and boys, for all humanity. Jesus said he would make them fish for people. He promised he would take the time to instruct and teach them so that he would make them, over time, fishers of people. In summary, in the gospel lesson, we see how Jesus began his own show and tell. <laughs> he did so by his own presence and in his words, as he called his disciples. This something showed in his person presence, who he was as Son of God and the power of the Spirit. This something showed indeed as he, his life was anchored in the relationship with the Father in the Word of God. This something also was seen in him sharing the good news of the kingdom of God. In looking at this text and what it means for us as disciples. It is clear that Jesus calls his disciples to likewise be a people of show and tell. Well, how can we be a people of show and tell? 
well, uh, when we first think about this, we might realize that it can indeed be difficult. After all, we are saints and sinners. We are sinners to the core, but we are also redeemed sinners who are named and claimed by God to be saints. It is the truth that how we live and how we behave does and can get in the way of showing Christ in us to the world. We are so close to the world and, and our desires and temptations that they often have their way with us. What we say and how we relate to others can betray the relationship we are given in Christ and the Spirit. What we say and how we relate to others can violate the love we are called to embody and to express. But having said that, are we just to give up? <clears throat> no, for we too are baptized. We too have received the Spirit that was, and the same Spirit that was poured out on Jesus of Nazareth. We have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Despite our sin and fallenness, the scales have been tipped in our favor as we are in the Spirit, given the living Christ and his righteousness. By his death and resurrection, and by grace through faith, we are given this glorious exchange where we trade, indeed, exchange our sin, our unrighteousness for his love, his presence, and forgiveness. The scales are tipped in our favor. We are able by grace through faith in the power of the Spirit to show Christ to the world. Now, when Jesus calls his disciples to follow him, he does not just mean to follow him as he moves from place to place in proclaiming the kingdom of God. To follow Jesus may include the geographical location of where we are and the expanse of geographical locations where we might go, but it includes something far deeper and greater. When Jesus calls disciples to follow him, he means for them to emulate him in his example of spiritual formation and practice in relationship with the Father. He means to follow him is that we as a child of God rely on the word of God and that our lives are steeped in prayer. That's something which Jesus showed in his life is that same something we are called to show in our own lives. And when our lives emulate his example, and when we are present to others as he was present, people will see, people will know, and we will show Christ to the world. It occurs something like this. A mother tells of how her daughter used to work for a pizzeria. She would pick up her daughter from work every evening. And when her daughter would get into the car, she'd smell like pizza. <laughs> Oftentimes, she smelled so good that the mother would go back into the store and, and buy a pizza. <laughs> you know, when one spends significant time in a pizzeria, one cannot help but smell like it. Just as one who spends time at the Claremont Cafe cannot help but smell like it. Just so, when one spends significant, consistent time with the Father, spends con significant, consistent time, and repeatedly relies on the Word of God, and when one spends dedicated, consistent time in prayer, one cannot help but inevitably show that something that Jesus himself showed. This something is genuine, it is unassuming, and it is real. That something is the graced presence of God in our lives. That something is the graced presence of God that is alive in us and shapes and forms us to our very core as a people. This presence is given to us in and through the Spirit. It is how we come to put on the mind, the character, the spiritual values and priorities of the living Christ. This something 
will and does show itself in our countenance, in how we comport ourselves in the presence of others. This something will and does show itself in the values and priorities we hold dear and esteem. This something will and does show itself in our attitudes and in our character. Again, I want to repeat to you what I said earlier. Despite our sin and fallenness, the scales have been tipped in our favor as we are in the Spirit given the living Christ and his righteousness. We are able by grace through faith in the power of the Spirit to show Christ to the world. Follow me, Jesus said. He refuses to demand that we follow him. He issues the invitation not just once, but time and time again. And my question for you and for me is, will we follow him in his example, emulating and putting Christ on as the baptized children of God? Will we show who he is in our very presence and who we are in the world? So that's the first point of show. Well, we know that show is followed by tell. Today's gospel makes it clear that Jesus doesn't just call his, his disciples into relationship with him. He makes it very clear what is to be their task. It is the task of fishing for people. Now, that indeed would be a frightening prospect if that were all that he had said. <laughs> However, he goes on to say that he will make them fishers for people. He tells them that he will instruct them, basically, and, and shows them and will show them how to become and to be fishers for people. This is something to which all disciples are called and able to do. Jesus basically is saying to them, just as I am casting the net far and wide and proclaiming the kingdom of God, so shall you. It is clear from the gospel narratives that the way to become a fisher for people is to be in the school of discipleship. There are no shortcuts. To be, certainly, in the school of discipleship means to be in relationship with Jesus. It means to spend time with him, to listen and to learn from him, to take on him, to put on his righteousness, his mind, his compassion, his values and attitude. It also means to be in, in relationship with one another as the body of Christ. It is to be in relationship with one another as we gather around word and sacrament as a people. To be in the school of discipleship is to be in relationship with one another to, in love and to listen and learn from each other, to serve one another with full, unconditional, positive regard, practicing forgiveness and seeking the common good. To be in the school of discipleship means to make it a priority, to be aware of, and to be compassionately responsive to the needs of those beyond the confines of the community, of the body of Christ. And to be in relationship with our neighbor, we offer ourselves in loving service and for the sake of justice for all people. It is this school of discipleship that makes disciples, forms them, shapes them, tools them. It is this school that makes disciples, fishers for people. If we shrink away from telling others, could it be that we have not dedicated ourselves and our time to the school of discipleship? That's a question for you and for me. As we become fishers for people, the task of telling may cause some anxiety in talking about who Christ is and in talking about our faith. However, like my own children who participated in show and tell, it is pretty simple. It's as simple as sharing one's experience, even with drama. <laughs> we speak out of that which we know. We speak out of our experience of whom we know. And we do so genuinely and openly. Somehow we get it in our head that we have to have it all put together. 
but that is not the case. As I spoke to you last week, as I identify that Jesus calls us each specifically and uniquely, it is out of that specific and unique call to each one of us whereby we are able to do our show and tell to others in the world. There is good news to share. I want to contrast that with the following story. It reminds me, I've just left my home boys throwing a baseball, and I think they hit one of my cars. <laughs> I'm not sure. They were in a field right next to where I was parked. Well, this is a story of Jeff, who was 12 years old. He and his friends were playing baseball on the few vacant lots in a crowded neighborhood. Jeff threw a ball that broke out a window on the house adjacent to the lot where they were playing. All the boys looked around to see if anyone was at home and if anyone had seen them. Well, no one came out of the house where the window had been broken, and there was no one in sight. However, Jeff's little eight-year-old brother saw it all. The boys were frightened, and they just they knew that he would tell what happened. Not only Jeff would get in trouble, but all the boys would get into trouble. So the boys went over and offered him a piece of candy. He refused. Hmm. I'll give you my baseball, Jeff said. Nope, <laughs> said his little brother. <laughs> then uh, uh, Jeff's friend said, well, what about my baseball and my new glove? <laughs> the boy looked at them and said, nope. They were aghast and wondering, well, what then do you want? With a grin and a gleam in his eye, Jeff's little brother looked up and said, I want to tell. <laughs> he could not wait to share the bad news with his mom and dad about what had happened. Disciples of Christ, what we have to share is not bad news <laughs> to get people in trouble, but rather good news to get them out of trouble. To know love and forgiveness and salvation and new life, even eternity. Being given instruction in the school of discipleship as to who Jesus is, what he has done and what he is doing, and coming to know the good life we share together in him, we not just want to tell, we are joyously compelled to tell in the Spirit. This is wonderful, sublime, precious news, too great not to be told. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Jesus essentially says, come with me, follow me, love me, abide with me, listen to me, learn from me, grow a relationship with me, grow a relationship with one another, and I will make you fish for people. Jesus invited his disciples then as he does now, to show and tell. How well do you show and tell? Do you show Jesus in your life? Do you tell of him and the good news that he has brought to you and the world? Questions for you and for me. Amen. Jesus.
whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconesses, for musicians and servers that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for the well-being of creation. The God raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those who provide leadership in our cities and around the world, for nonprofit and non-governmental organizations, for planning commissions and homeless advocates, that God inspire all people in the just use of wealth, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, for the outcast and all who await relief, especially those on our prayer list, that in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our congregation and community, for families big and small, and for the organizations that meet here during the week, that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith, whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, that they point us to salvation through Christ, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen.
go in peace. Be the light of Christ in the world. Thanks be to God.